Hello my friends, this is Ian and welcome to today's video. This is for day 7 in Inktober and the theme for this one was exhausted. And this video, the commentary isn't going to be full length simply because uh, it's going to be a long one. I spent a long time working on this one because I had a whole lot of fun doing it. And the reason for that is because I decided that I was going to draw a dragon. One of my all time favourite things to draw, there's so many things that I I love about the process of drawing dragons that I tend to take my time and this picture was no exception so the video is going to be a little bit longer and I very much doubt that I'm going to have much that I can say I'm certainly not I think it's about 13 minutes so I'm going to talk as much as I can about the picture because I did a few things with this one that uh, took took it to another level that I don't think I've reached yet with any of the other uh, ones so far. In particular, the closest I would say was the one that I did for Roasted. This one is somewhere around there, but I leveled up the amount of uh, detail and time that I took on the line work in particular. But the main focus of the picture wasn't or isn't the dragon, it's in fact the exhausted warrior who's just slain this epic beast in what can only assume was some massive scale of battle for this bare skin clad warrior armed only with a sword to take down this enormous beast of a dragon. And here we're seeing its aftermath as he's laying victorious but knackered, as so rightly he should be. <laughs> I spent a while with my 2B pencil roughing out the perspective and the anatomy of the two figures to make sure that they were in a comfortable and correct feeling pose before I moved on to detailing with an HB pencil. But I saved most of the detailing work until I was inking with the porcupine. I did have some problems getting the uh, proportions or the angle of the warrior's legs feeling right, particularly towards the lower parts. Thankfully I realised that I actually needed something in the foreground and that was probably going to be covering his feet anyway so I didn't need to draw them and that's fine. <laughs> As soon as I realised that, I just put in a rock there and I was like, yeah, that actually works really well, I'm happy with that. But as I say, most of the sketch was kept really loose except for some of the details around the main character and the head of the drag. I didn't want too many details in the back and too many details in the front because that would confuse the eye, so just having a few areas to remind me that this is where I should be concentrating the details should help me later on in the process. Annoyingly whilst I was using my kneaded eraser to remove some of the 2B lines, it ripped off the very top surface of the paper. Um, normally when that happens with a, a sheet of paper you find that it starts really the inks and watercolors or whatever you're using the they start to really bleed into the paper in that area and I was afraid that it was going to do that and I was going to have to start again. This paper for whatever reason doesn't seem to do that. I've removed that top layer of paper and yet it still behaved just the same underneath it so I don't know whether that's uh, a huge bonus to this type of paper or maybe it just didn't tear enough of it off for it to have an effect, I don't know, but it seemed to work out for the best anyway because I could carry on and use the inks and everything without it bleeding in, which was great. When it came to the inking it took me a lot longer than it would normally do to do the porcupine phase of the whole picture. Um, I, there were a lot more small details and things that I wanted to highlight with it, there were a lot more tiny little things that I needed to get into, so it took me a little bit longer just for comparison the roasted image that I did the other day took about 20 minutes to do all the line work with the ink pen whereas this one took over half an hour to do all the line work with the ink pen. It's one of my favourite parts of the entire process just because everything really starts to solidify and you can see your design kind of emerging from the sketch. 
And because the design is already there on the page, you don't have to think about anything. You're not constructing the image as you go, you're just letting your hand and your pen fill in the details. And you can have music on in the background and just kind of let your hand wander across the page and do whatever it wants to. And because the design is already there, you've already worked it out in your sketch, the time just kind of flies by and you kind of zone out whilst you're doing it. And then before you know it, you look at your page, you've done all your line work, and you can see the image coming together and the design is solidifying. The one thing that I did kind of have to keep my wits about me for when I was doing the line work was to not over detail at this stage in the areas that I wanted to add detail because a lot of that was going to come down through the layering techniques that I use with the aquash pen. Instead I just needed a few scales on the dragon just to hint at the texture of its skin. If I'd allowed myself to, I could have very easily ended up detailing every single one of them, which is something that I end up doing quite a lot with my digital paintings, is that I will go through and I will draw out every single scale. And in digital, that is something that I find works really well for me, just because I like having a lot of detail, a lot of attention to the very small details and the textures and things in a digital painting, whereas in a traditional picture like this, having too many details, especially ones done in black line art, are going to detract from the final piece. They're going to make it feel very cluttered, very overbearing, and you're not going to be able to pick up on, say, the eye of the dragon would be a lot harder just to distinguish if there are a lot of scales all drawn around it as well. So I tried to keep the amount of scales that I was drawing with the ink pen to a minimum, whilst also having enough to really emphasize the, the texture and the uh, feel of the dragon's scale and skin. Once all the line work was completed, I moved on to using my aquash pens. I don't think I fully uh, explained my technique with the aquash pens before. Now, I actually, I have three aquash pens, all with different ink levels in them. So I've got one which is a very dilute one, which is kind of a, a, a very light gray. And then I've got a darker gray one, which has got, obviously is more concentrated. And then I actually have a third one, which you haven't seen, which has red ink in it. Uh, is a solution of red ink and water in it. Um, I have red ink and I'm thinking at some point it might be quite fun to do one of these Inktobers in red ink instead of black. I don't know which one though. Um, I had a look through the, the list of them for the rest of the month and none of them really jumped out at me. I think Star could have worked but I've actually already completed Star. That's uh, going to be coming out tomorrow hopefully. Uh, but what I was going to say is, is there any of the future prompts for Inktober that you guys think would look really good in red ink? Or do you just want me to choose one at random and do that entirely in red ink instead of do doing it in black? Let me know what you think down in the comments below because I'm interested to see because I don't know how it will end up looking. Uh, the red ink is something that I bought on a whim a few years ago and I've not really used at all. I, I think I did some washes on something a little while ago. But yeah, let me know what you think down in the comments. Would you like to see me do an Inktober in red ink? I think it could be fun. But going back to this image, I used the most dilute version of my aquash solution. First, applying the ink to any area which I felt wasn't going to be in direct sunlight. So any surface which wasn't directly facing the light or wasn't obviously going to be hit by the light, like say the ground. I used the lightest grey in those areas, then moved on to the slightly darker grey, filling in the areas around those which were even less so in the sun. I also used them both to start defining out the textures of the scales and things in the dragon so that I was filling in some of those areas that I'd left blank with the ink pen earlier deliberately all this before finally moving on to the pure black ink just to fill in the areas which were absolutely not going to be being hit by the sun. 
and to really help define some of those shapes. I did struggle a little bit around the jaw of the dragon, which is actually where I started using the black ink, and it, I just made it a little bit too flat, I think. I think if I'd been a bit more random with the rim lighting around the edge of the jaw and how the black ink then merges into the other areas of texture detail on the jaw. I think it would have had a better result. As it is, it kind of looks like the bottom part of his jaw is really, really smooth. And dragons ain't smooth. Well, maybe some dragons are smooth. I don't want to be, like, smoothest against dragons. Maybe some dragons are really smooth, like jazz dragons. Bet they're smooth. I tried to keep the darker washes and the pure ink towards the front of the image and then the background of the image, the mountains and the grass or the plains behind the scene were only done with the very lightest of grey. That helps separate the two parts of the image so that the background stays in the background and separate from the foreground. The very last thing that I did was to coat the sky area with just straight up plain water and then used the different washes of ink to create a sky texture and the clouds and such using the lighter grey to around randomly across the sky in the water to bleed in. This will create a kind of uh, a mottled effect and then use the darker grey colour to emphasise the shadow areas of those clouds. Overall I'm really happy with how this piece came out, it was always going to be something that I enjoyed doing simply because of the subject, it's a dragon therefore I'm going to love drawing this. And amazingly I have managed to speak almost consistently for the entirety of this video so I hope you have enjoyed this video and I haven't spoken too much and bored you stupid. If you have enjoyed it please do make sure to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you haven't already and as always guys please do take care and I will see you next time.